Hello, and thank you for joining today's ClickMail webinar. My name is Elsa Rodriguez, and I will be co-presenting with Aaron. During this presentation, all lines will be muted, and we ask that the chat box is used to ask questions as they come up. A recording of the webinar will be emailed to all attendees following this webinar. Today's presenter is senior consultant Aaron Bedbick. Aaron has been with Guide Technologies for seven years and has been working with Infor Cloud Suite Industrial for almost 20 years. Aaron, without further ado, I will pass the controls over to you. All right, thanks, Elsa. And thanks, everybody, for joining us today for our, our webinar on ClickMail. Uh, as Elsa said, just yeah, if you have questions as we're going along, please uh, submit them, and I'll try to answer them uh, during the presentation. Um, otherwise, we can also answer questions at the end, of course. So this is a uh, quick mail. So I want to just go through the quick agenda for today. Okay, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about you know standard functionality with CSI email, and, and and you're all users, I presume, so you're you're familiar with that. But we'll talk about the kind of current limitations. We'll go over the um, the features of of Click Mail. We'll do a demonstration, and then a summary of the benefits at the end. So business issues with standard functionality. And again, as I think you all would be aware, um, the with using you know customer and vendor document profiles, uh, you can only send you know CSI generated documents to a predefined list of people. So it's you know you get one list, and you know if, say you have multiple contacts at, at your you know, company or your vendor, it's so you only get one list, and sometimes that's hard to manage. Uh, subject, the subject and the body of emails cannot be customized. The from email shows something generic, you know, like, like uh, no reply at whatever your company is dot com. And, and that can be confusing sometimes because it kind of looks like spam or can look like spam. I've heard of that with some of our clients. And then there's no easy way to see whether an email was sent or if it was undeliverable. In, in version 901, Info introduced uh, another way of sending email, which is the send email for current object. So, so you do get an email editor there. However, you still have to, or you have to save a document like a purchase order. Um, you know, save it and then attach it manually. So it's still a, a manual process. Uh, also, there's no no vendor contacts uh, built in, you know, which is similar to sales contacts. So quick mail functionality. So, so quick mail. And the main thing with ClickMail is what we're trying to give our clients is a, is a way to send email um, you know, with a CSI generated document um, and a full-blown email editor. So that's the idea. You can, you can add recipients uh, dynamically. You can type them in. We have a drop-down to make it really easy for you. Um, you can edit the subject and the body of the email. Um, you can also default in recipients. Um, from multiple ways, multiple um, different, like three different ways you can pull in email addresses besides ma manually adding them. Um, you can also add variables to your to your template, which then translate in, translates into the email. So, for instance, I could have the purchase order number, you know, be in my subject line, um, or I could have the total dollar amount, so something like that. So it's whatever is available on the form that we're emailing from, basically. Um, the, the the current system um, or the cur current application it supports sending email this way with for email uh, I'm sorry for estimates for customer orders for RMAs purchase orders and then four different types of invoices on on a reprint basis for invoices. Um, also included with with ClickMail or part of ClickMail is there's there's predefined templates for each form that we that we um, support um, and as you're probably aware as well there's there's different like on a purchase order there's different templates I don't get kind of confusing the terminology there but there's different templates of the report and so we have we put a separate template that that um, basically lets you use any of those um, report templates that you like so and we, we used to provide a predefined template for each one and this will make more sense when we get to it uh, and then we've also have it really made it easy for for users to be able to view and and search email um, using some reference fields that we added in there. Um, and of course, we we've added in functionality for 
uh, creating and maintaining vendor contacts uh, that we'll look at here. All right, so let's do a demonstration. So first thing we're gonna do is I, I have a uh, already existing customer order. I just wanna show you kind of the, the main power of, of, of ClickMail. Need to minimize that, okay. So, so the, here's the main power of the, of the, of the, of the application is that I, I'm on an existing customer order and I'm going to click email document. So this is a new button and click email document. And what pops up here is a, is a list of templates, which, which we're gonna talk more about. I get a whole list of templates here and I can pick any template that I want that's, that's uh, available to me. And you can see here that it defaults in, you know, I have a, I have a message, I, I have some email addresses. These are coming over from somewhere else than, than the template, but, but uh, it doesn't matter. Um, and I can edit any of these things that I want. And, and you can see here by picking this template, I know that I'm, I'm gonna be sending the order verification uh, simple report. So once I have, I have this you know, selected, I'm gonna make sure I have an email address. There's a drop down over here, which is all of the sales contacts that we have assigned to this customer. So I'm gonna pick myself so we can see it. And I'll pick myself, but I can add as many as I want. I can have a CC, BCC, all of that. And once I'm ready, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click send email. And so I've set up a, a, a special inbox for this presentation today, and it, it's over here in my email. And so we'll see that email show up here pretty quick. It takes about uh, one to two minutes for the email to be generated and, and be sent. And so what's happening behind the scenes is that there's an event running. That's one of the, you know, one of the events that we've customized and or written, I should say. And the event is generating the report and in waiting, and as soon as it sees that the report has been generated, then it captures that, adds it into an email, and sends it, and there it is. So, so here's my order verification report that I, that I just sent with my message, and I can open this up, and I can see the, uh, the order verification report. Now this is, again, the, I think it was the simple we sent, and it's just like anything else, any other report that I would generate um, using the preview or the print function from the order verification report um, form. So, so there's that. And we're gonna go ahead and go back, back over here and we're gonna look at uh, some more of the particulars and details of how ClickMail works. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up the, the vendor, uh, vendor contacts. So I'm going to click mail vendor contacts. And I'm going to unfilter here. So here's your list of all the vendor contacts that are out there. And I and it's just like you know, very similar to sales contacts. Um, this is the same. We have you know less buttons and things. But I'm going to go ahead and add it, add a new one. I'm going to add myself here so we can use that a little bit. And I'm going to make up a phone number here. And not required, but highly suggested is that we want to add an email address here. Because then, as we saw earlier, this is going to become available in, in my drop down when I go to send an email. And once I have that, I'm going to go ahead and save it. So I've created a new vendor contact. That easy, I obviously could fill in all this other information if I wanted to. Um, probably in real life, you'd want to do that, but I'm not gonna take the time to do that today. And then I'm gonna click the vendors XREF button. And here I'm going to pick which, which vendor I want to link this to. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick the uh, Wilson Supply Company. Of course, this is demo, demo bicycle data. Grab that Wilson Supply Company, save it. So now I've linked my, my new vendor contact to my vendor. And if I right click on this and go to details to pull up the vendor screen, I 
I can see over here, here's my vendors form, and that we've added a new tab, and this is the Click Mail Vendor Contacts tab. So if I, if I go click on this, I can see all of the all the contacts that I've assigned to this vendor. And I can also you know, pick any one of these contacts here. I have myself twice, looks like. But anyway, and I'm going to pick, I can pick uh, Sherry here, and I can click on the vendor's XREF form. And I can see all of these people that I've that I've linked back to my vendor. And I could add a new one here as well. And this time my vendor defaults in and I'm adding in a different contact. So kind of circular there. But so lots of ways you can do this. You can you can you also can open up the, the click mail vendor contact cross-reference form unlinked and just add, you know, add associations there. So that's vendor contacts. So I've added in a new vendor contact and associated it to my vendor number eight. So the next thing we're gonna look at is we're gonna look at the templates. So this is a you know, key to the system, of course, to the, this, this application is, is the templates. So I'm gonna open up and I'm going to, to grab the ClickMail templates. And I'm going, to, I'm going to find one of these templates. And the easiest way to create a new template is to look at, you know, find an existing one that's the closest to what you have, you know, what you want, and then copy it and edit it. So I'm going to find the purchase order simple report. And I'm going to go to actions and then copy this. And so I'm just going to rename this for our demo today. I'm going to just going to go ahead and call it purchase order simple dash demo. But maybe in real life you would do your initials. Uh, maybe you have different groups. You might want to give it a name uh, for a group. Uh, maybe you want to copy a uh, salesperson or copy. You know, in any case, you can name it whatever you want that makes sense to you. Uh, I can also put, put a description on here, optional. Uh, I can put in on a two, I can put in default email addresses so if i if i wanted to include myself or somebody i could i could include that so we're gonna we're gonna do uh we're gonna add todd one of our employees uh, as, a, as a as a cc i could add a bcc if i wanted to uh and then i and i could have on here in the subject i can put this you know whatever i like on the subject also, you'll see there's a variable that defaulted in. So this P and then parentheses PO num, this is going to insert the, the PO number automatically into the subject. And like I mentioned before, you can you can pull any field that you want from the record that you're emailing from. So if you have a purchase order total or maybe you wanted a vendor, you know, vendor name or something, anything you can get on the PO form, you could grab it. Uh, I'm also going to add a message in here. I'm going to say hello and uh, So please see attached purchase order and confirm within, uh, let's just say 48 hours, we'll give them a couple days. So I've added, I've added my message in here. And then the next piece of this is I need to tell the system, and it defaulted in because we copied, of course, but it tell the system which task is is it that that we're assigning this template to? You know, the naming kind of associates them, but really this is what actually does it. And so, what we're doing when we when we send the email is we're generating a report, and we're going to you know basically have a background task that we're that we're linking it to. So I'm going to pick a background task, which is the purchase order simple report, and then all of these, all of the, this whole string here. This is what tells the system what choices we're making when we're emailing the report, or, or I should say generating the report. So this string here is telling the system to, you know, which, which template to use, and um, you know, do you want to, you know, with certain lines to include, whatever, whatever the choices are on the purchase order report, this string is what's telling the system um, what to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and I can save this. And you'll see that, that once I do that, this gets grayed out. And, and if I want to edit this, I can. I, I just have to click on this Edit Parms button, and then it becomes editable. And the idea here is we didn't want anybody to you know, accidentally delete it or type in something extra. Um, we want just a little bit extra control on it, so that's why we have this, this button here. Uh, 
also you could do is you could you could add another attachment that's part of this this template. So for example, I could attach a terms and conditions if I wanted to. Um, uh, that's probably the main thing I could see doing for a purchase order. But you might have other things you want to attach, uh, you know, marketing or something like that around that customer order side of things, or just any kind of document you want to attach that that's part of the template. So once I have all this, I've, I've got. I've got uh, you know my my two if I want to or a CC or a subject all those things filled in. Uh, got it saved. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this template form XREF button. And once this pops up, I'm going to see here that that I've got my my template, and I, I'm going to tell the system you know, which which uh, form I'm going to link this to. So I'm going to go ahead and do purchase orders. And then the next thing is, is I can, if I want this template to be just for me, I could pick myself as a user. Uh, if I leave it as a star, it's going to be available for everybody. The next thing is, is, is to click on this active checkbox, and then this becomes a, an active template. So, so the reason we have that there is that maybe, maybe you're, you're developing some new templates. You don't want you know, people to start using them yet. You can have it be in a, you know, in, inactive or just not even set this up, this association up while you're still testing, perhaps. Um, or just probably makes sense just uncheck the active box. In any case, I'm going to go ahead and save it. Okay, so I've associated my, my new template to the purchase orders form. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to close this. And close this. And I'm actually going to kind of close everything here. And we're going to open up purchase orders. And I'm going to, going to go ahead and unfilter here. And we're going to use this this one here, uh, PO401 for Wilson Supply. So that's where we added our contact. So same as on the customer orders that we looked at earlier. I'm going to I'm going to click on the three dots, and I'm going to click on the button that says Email Document. And I'm going to go ahead and pick a template. So I'm going to pick our pick our new template. So I'm going to go scroll down here. Pick, pick our new template. And you see a bunch of things um, you know, fill in here, and we'll, we'll talk about these fields a little bit more detail here. So we, we, we pick the template. You can see there's this box, this notes box, and we fill, we fill in the, the purchase order, kind of the form, right? There's the PO and, and the number, but you could add other information here. So if there's something that, you know, you wanted to kind of tag this with a note, um, you could do that. You know, it's, it's not gonna show up on the email, it'll just be something that's kind of a reference to yourself. Uh, we've also added in, just to make it a little bit easier to search, we've added in a reference. And this is going to be the, the purchase order number or the customer order number, the RMA, the invoice, et cetera. Well, it'll be next field is the customer or the vendor. And then if it's a customer, it'll be it'll be a ship to here. So we're just trying to we add some fields to make it really easy to search, and we'll we'll use that later. Uh, next thing is 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 this this two email address it, it defaulted in and so this came from I'm going to click on my my customer just can't can't do it there as a reference field I'm going to go to my customers and if I put in customer eight and I go to my contacts um, I, I could be pulling in email addresses from here. Okay, so this is a, this is one, and in this case, it's not pulling from there, but I could be pulling it from here. So where this is actually going to be coming from is our vendor document profile, or customer document profile, excuse me. Okay, so so here's our our uh, destination is the this hold on one second here i think i lied so 
so anyway, the hierarchy is, is that the, the email addresses will pull in from the vendor, the customer document profile. It's filled in here and it's active. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm uh, not in the right place here. I need to be on vendors, excuse me. All right, vendor eight. There we go. There we go. Too many uh, same, similar kind of numbers there. So in any case, th this, so the email address is going to be pulling in from here, this external email address. Um, the hierarchy is, is that if I have a, a customer vendor document profile in this case, it, and it's active, I would use those email addresses. Since I, since uh, um, it's not, I mean, I'm pulling in the, the external email address here. So this email address pulls in. Um, this email address is pulling in from the templates. And I'm going to go ahead and delete this. This is not you know, real, that demo data. And I'm going to go over here to this drop down. And I'm going to, I see myself there and a bunch of other people I could choose. So I'm going to grab myself. Uh, I'm going to pick another person here. And, and, and this will be a CC. And I can, I'm going to go ahead and click add email addresses. So I put, pulled that in there. I've got a two and I've, I've got uh, a couple of different email addresses here on the CC and I could add a, a BCC if I wanted to. And, and so once I've got this all filled in, here's my, here's my PO information or my, or my body of my email, I should say. And I could also, maybe this is a really hot order. I could say, uh, you know, something like, you know, this is really hot. Uh, you know, please expedite. And I could add in my name here, something like that. I could go ahead and do that. And I could click send email when I'm ready. So that one's sent off. You know, you also don't have to send a document. So the other thing that, that we thought about is it'd be nice to be able to just um, record communication, you know, something that you're sending out to your vendor um, that, you know, in the system and be able to see that email. So I could go ahead and click email document. And you'll notice right here that there's a, a template that says this has generic email and you could rename it something else, but we have a generic email template. And this one doesn't, doesn't have a document attached to it or assigned to it. So basically you're just sending email. And so I'm going to go ahead and uh, fill this in and I could, I could pick an email address. I'll pick myself again. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and add this. And I'm just gonna say it's a test, you know, test email. And then this is an email without an attachment. And, and just as you can see what happens with, if, say I make a mistake and I, and I try to type in my own email address, but I make a mistake and I forget the, miss the A on there and I can type in this and I'm missing the A. So this is gonna be an invalid email address. And so again, as we talked about earlier, one of the problems with Standard functionality is you, you send a PO out and you don't really know that the email sent, you don't know whether there's a mistake on the email address, you don't know whether maybe that person uh, who you used to, you haven't worked with in six months, maybe they left the company and, and now that email's bouncing and you just have no idea. So with this, we, we will get a bounce back. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and send a legit one to myself and then also CC uh, uh, an invalid email address. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and send this. And so that's that's sending. And I, if I want to kind of see what's happening with that, besides my my inbox or you know my my vendor's inbox, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to click on the the view sent emails button here. And so here's here's the email that that I've sent for this one. So I I can look at this and say this this one is just a few minutes ago. So here's. Actually, this yeah, this is the one that went a little faster. Actually, this is my this is the one for 
a um, just generic email. And so there's no attachment, right? So there's you're not waiting for the the um, the purchase order to generate. So this one's really quick. So here's the generic email that I sent. Uh, here's one from earlier today. And if I refresh this, that that PO should be generating and sending here. Hopefully it's coming through. Let's go look at my my inbox. And the balances take a little bit longer to to uh, show up sometimes. And, you know, I think that makes sense because uh, no, that was pretty quick. But sometimes it's the systems will we will retry. Uh, you may you know even can take 24 hours. I've seen where it, where uh, the email like your your vendor's email might be trying to uh, you know retry it, um, get stuck in some kind of loop. But so here's the the test email that we sent. It's just a communication, and here's the bounce. So now I know that, hey, something happened. This person, either I mistyped it or perhaps I, uh, uh, you know, that person left the company. You never know, something like that. So, so, this is, so this is that bounce. So let's go back over here. So I'm not sure why this isn't sending. So this is the, uh, in process, this is a, or this is email. It's in process, and so far it has not sent. But normally this would be done in about less than less than two minutes is, is how long it takes to send. So let's while we're while we're waiting on this thing, let's let's go look at if I wanted to go look at email. So the, well, this first of all, this is the word the email that I've sent for this vendor. But if I want to go look and search for email, maybe I don't remember when I sent something, or perhaps I. Um, you know, I know I sent sent a PO to this vendor or something like that. I'm not sure when it was, or I, I can't remember who it was, but I remember I, I put some information in there. So let's go look. I could I could pull this uh, this form up unlinked. And I'm gonna go to the ClickMail outbound sent email. And this is all of the email that I've ever I've ever sent here. Okay, and and so if I I can filter, and I can use some of these these special fields that that we added in earlier. So uh, I could say uh, you know a, a vendor number or a customer number. I, I could put in um, you know maybe maybe I'm some uh, some other person sent some email. They're out on vacation. I want to go look it up. You know I could I could say you know who who was it from. Um, but anyway, I'm going to go ahead and and pick a a, uh, a vendor, you know, and I could say it was on a certain date or a date range, that kind of thing. So I, I could maybe I'll pick today. I'll just pick this this uh, in this case it'd be customer or vendor eight, right? Uh, hopefully you have different numbers for your different series for your vendors and your customers, but this is demo data. So I'm gonna go ahead and filter against that. So here's everything that I've sent to this this customer you know, it's like a, this or this this vendor really so it is like it is all these are all purchase orders i can tell from the reference here so i can see you know who sent it um when it was sent here's some stuff from sun the sun conference and and, and then if i want to look at one of these po's you know, i can grab this and i can go to that was communication I can click on this and i can go to view and i can see the PO that I sent. So you know, this is nice because you know, maybe I had a change to the PO. I don't remember if I sent them the latest version. You know, that's a kind of a scenario people have pretty commonly, especially if you don't use change orders, which is change orders are kind of painful. So people use, don't like to use them. This way I can see, hey, that I did send this, uh, this latest version of the PO. So I, that's good. I know that they have the right one. So, so that's how you, I can search against any of these fields. I could search against that special notes field that we have up here. So if you added something in there special, um, that kind of thing. So that's that's basically the, the demo that I've got. And I'm not sure what happened with this one not, not sending here, but normally it works. And uh, and and I'm just gonna go ahead and look at the you know kind of the uh, kind of the wrap up here. And if anybody has any questions. Uh, please let us know. Aaron, while you're doing that, we had a question that came through just a couple minutes ago. Okay. And the question is, 
how does ClickMail coexist with CSI 10 and the regular updates from Infor? Will an update from Infor require reinstallation or form sync? Uh, so, so it's a good question. Yeah, this is we, we haven't quite got there yet, but the, yeah, this is definitely designed and, and supported in ten um, as well as you know, multi-tenant ten. Uh, you know, it is possible that I mean, with any kind of modification that that a, a, an update from from Infor, I suppose, could break it. Uh, that's possible, like like in like any other mod. But uh, but we have you know, our developers are you know we're, so we're monitoring the the patches. Um, you know, we're we're testing to make sure that, that it doesn't break. Um, we you know, we have our own cloud environment where we can we can test this stuff as the patches get rolled out. So, so we you know it's it's possible that we may have to do uh, a patch based on something that that Infor does. But you know, we we've written this such that you know we you know with best you know best practices, so we don't expect to have a lot of issues with that. You know, as we have custom events and things that you know we're not gonna hopefully aren't going to bump into anything that Infor would do. So hopefully that answered the question. If not, please let us know. And then I'm going to jump into the, the quick mail benefits, but please, if you have more questions, let me know, let us know. So just as a wrap up here, the, the quick mail benefits, uh, quickly create and edit email that includes a CSI generated document as we saw. Um, I mean, this the system also allows users to track multiple vendor contacts uh, versus only one that's you know allowed with standard CSI. Um, as we saw, the templates can easily be created and personalized, you know, just for you, or you can share them with all of your colleagues. Uh, you can track you know email history, and you can search against key information, the vendor number, the PO, or whatever you like. Um, you can receive a notification of bounced and undelivered emails with uh, with proper configuration. It does does require. You know, we had we had our technical person make sure everything was set up correctly to get those bounces, but uh, once we did that, it, it worked just fine. And then, as I mentioned a little bit ago, that this is available for versions um, 901 and 01, and it's uh, in the multi-tenant cloud um, is supported. So. So that that is uh, the the quick mail demonstration today, the webinar, and and uh, is there any other questions? Yeah, I've got another one that came through here for you, and you're asking, do I manually have to click on a email document, or can I generate for a range of orders such as customer orders or purchase orders? Yeah, this is designed to be. It's not really a range because. The idea is that you you have that email editor, and it's per it's per document. So it's you know you wouldn't like I guess it, you know we didn't we didn't really make that as a as a use case in that you'd want to send a range of POs because then you would you basically have to edit the email for each 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 PO let's say. So yeah, really this is just designed for a a one to one. You click on the button and then you're able to you know edit your email and send it. The one that came through are the PDFs attached to the records, such as the PO recorded when generated. If so, where and how is this stored in the system? Yeah. So when we over here, when we sent we sent an email, uh, you know, that I guess I'm not sure if it, if the question is is you know technically where is it stored in the system, and I, I might have to get an answer back on that where it's stored, but as far as from a user experience, the the purchase order or the customer order, or the invoice, whatever, they're they're attached to the this record here. You know, it's the click mail outbound sent email. So that record is here, and the document is is available here. So by clicking the view button. But if the question was, you know, where is it technically stored on the system, I would have to get an an answer back to you. So if, if whoever asked that question wanted to wanted to uh, um, maybe add to the question, we can we can clarify that. Anything else? Yes, We've got another question here. It's asking, can you tell us the reports that can be emailed again, 
and are these SSRS reports or mongoose form reports? Yes, good good question. So I'm going to go look at the the templates. I just think it's an easy way to to see all of them. So all of the so the reports that are and it's it's some of both right now. Um, Yes, it's some of both, but here's all the reports. So if, you, if we kind of go down the list here, so we have um, consolidated invoicing. And, and like I was mentioning, there's there's two types of templates. Like we have our click mail template, and then we have the template that's on the report that you, know, it, you can choose the way that report looks, right? So, so for consolidated invoicing, for example, there's a, a detail, a draft, and a laser. So you know we have a starting template for each one of those report templates. So we have consolidated invoicing, we have estimate, the estimate response, and there's two different versions here. Uh, generic email, which you know there's no no report per se, it's just an email. Uh, order invoicing has uh, four different ones. The order verification report has three three different ones. The purchase order has three, and this is one that you know we just added in. Uh, there's the RMA credit memo the RMA verification and service order invoicing. And so we could go look at the background task, but I believe there's a mix still of, of Mongoose and SSRS. Uh, however, I think in 10, uh, it's, if, I, if I remember correctly, everything got moved over to Mongoose, but I would need to verify that. Okay. And we're also, if somebody had a, a said, was really interested in another document. We, we considered other ones when developing this product. Uh, if, if somebody said, hey, we, I really need a customer statements or something, you know, we would be open to adding that in. Um, that was one of the ones on our list of things that we potentially would add down the road anyways. But if there was some particular document that was of great interest to somebody, we would look at that. Wonderful. It looks like not seeing any more questions coming through. As always, if anything comes up, please do not hesitate to reach out to myself or Aaron, and we will be sending the recording of this WebEx out later this afternoon. Great, thanks, thanks everybody. Paul.